That's Ted Benson and the Van Ostrom girl. They're engaged, aren't they? I, I'm going to get a statement. Oh, congratulations in order, Mr. Benson. Uh, you'll have to ask Mr. Van Ostrom. There's no definite date. Of course, I'm very happy. Nice work, Barney. How's Mrs. Oldfield? Say, listen, you big palooka. What do you want to take in the whole room for when they come around? That man's in again. Can't keep out of the spotlight, can you, Sonny? Tommy Tilton, famous columnist, unhurt in crash. Thank you, thank you. I was feeling a trifle shattered. A warm reception has welcomed me and heartened me. Today. I only hope I can always be worthy of such devotion. How much is all that? That'll be $1.60. Nothing extra for the three-point landing? Here. <laughs> left it in the other suit, or just left it? How did you get? Keep the change. Hey, easy with my money. Oh, Smitty wants more to A pint of gin. Such depravity, darling, you'll go blind. That's not why I can't see you. Well, if it is, Mr. Tilton himself. Oh, hello, Flanagan. How are you? Tommy Tilton. Maybe you'll have a piece in the column about me. There'll be a piece in the paper, all right, all right. Well, go ahead and swear out a charge. Two against one. Who'll believe your story anyway? I will, for one. Come on. Say, they're pulling the old stolen jewel gag with Nadia. No, this time's on the level. That reminds me, when I was on the Baltimore Post, we yes, had a... Yes, I remember that one. Say it. Thank you, Luigi. Mr. Tilton, tonight you will be my guest. Waiter, you will take Mr. Tilton's order and bring the bill to me. And if the bill is more than five dollars, you will pay for him yourself. The roof, she's a top. The limit. Mr. Walter, won't you please help me a moment? I can't seem to get this hooked. I think the dance is wonderful. Mr. Office don't be able to throw your partner around like this. It's all annoying how. I had to train Valerie. <laughs> I guess I taught her all she knows. The lucky girl. I always wanted to be a dancer. Mm -hmm. You taught me all I know. When I first knew you, you were dancing for cakes and Dutch mice. It's so strong. Yeah. Except in my head. Doll like you can make a sack out of me. And it's for you. Let me go! Let me go! All right down, will you, Val? When I get through, you won't be dancing. You'll be playing a heart. What is this? You will ruin me? I will not stand for it. 
I can't tell you. I close you. You are finished. Out. And that's for you. You. Get up. And now you will get up. Get up. Bridegroom elect, sit down. Have something. On Luigi. Not a thing, thanks. What are you doing here? I came east to get married. Oh, you should have gone west, young man. Oh, marriage is a fine institution. Yes, I couldn't live in an institution. No, seriously, Miss Van Austin's a very fine girl. You ought to be happy. Sure. I'm happy. Come on, what is it? Spill the beans to father. What's the matter? Nadja. Nadja? Oh, yes, that was the amazing interlude of your freshman year. I thought that was past history. So did I. But Nadia had different ideas. You see, I wrote some letters. Letters? Well, well, well. Not very original, are you, old boy? How much? Ten thousand dollars. A lot of dollars. Why don't you tell Miss Van Ostrom all about it and then tell Nadia where she gets off? I'm pretty sure Vi knows. Uh, she insisted on coming here tonight just to see how I'd taken it. <laughs> Ripping you a little, eh? I like that. I like a girl with a sense of humor. What can Nadia do? Go to her father, Tommy. Old Van Austin. Yeah, terrible stuffed shirt. But he's got all his buttons. Look here. I'll see Nadia. And what I don't know, she'll think I know. Thanks, Tom. Don't mention no boy. Sort of engagement present. Tommy Kelton, you were talking to? You were at college together, weren't you? Why, yes, we were fraternity brothers. Oh. Very pretty. How much are they? Only five dollars, sir. Take them on my bill. I quit. I am very sick. I go home. You, Mr. Berwine, you cannot I quit. I go home. No, no. Very wonderful place you have here, Luigi. You are the most kind, Signor. <laughs> Who's there? One Thomas Tilton. Daring gift. Oh, come in, tell me. Be your angel, child. Tell me they're lovely. And I'm going to wear them just for you. Mine is complete. Tell me, are you still running around with Gordon? No, of course not. He's married. Now, don't you evade the question. You are going to write something nice about me, aren't you? I always write something nice about good little girls. Now, listen. I'm going to get all my jewelry back tonight. My bracelets, my rings. That's good. I suppose it'll cost you plenty, though. I know that racket. No, that's a strange part of it. Nobody ever tried to shake me down and got away with it. I believe you. The shoe's generally on the other foot, isn't it? Meaning? Three guesses. By the way, Nadia, darling, lay off Ted Benson. That little affair is all washed up. So that's the reason you came? No, 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 not entirely. But incidentally, lay off. Who do you think you're ordering? I keep Ted Benson's letters close by me. And if Ted should want to let a jury read them, it's okay by me. Oh my, aren't you getting a little tough? I've got to take care of myself. And Ted can afford it now that he's marrying the Van Austin millions. Well, I just thought I'd tip you off, that's all. You can't frighten me. All right, Nadia. Just to show there are no hard feelings, I will mention you in my column tomorrow. Let's see, it ought to be something about your jewels, shouldn't it? Wasn't it young Cantor who... He wouldn't dare. Why not? Shot himself, eh? Something about a shortage in his father's bank. Cursed you, dear, if he lay dying. You weren't mentioned. You got a break. Now I want one. So you're bothering me. Asking for Ted's letter. 
No, I'm demanding that you send for him and give them back. Is that plain? How did you find out? Tommy Tilton. Sees all, hears all, and dares all. Really, you wrong me, sweetheart. You win. I thought your better nature would triumph. Smart Alec. Tell Ted to come and get them. Like little plating this, yours? Along with the Valerie woman. She made a pass at me with it. Now, will you get out? On my way, baby. On my way. Just a cheap chiseler. Oh, these? Angel, I'm changing them for scallions. Ladies and gentlemen, I am most pleased to tell you that Marangali Navia is going to sing for you. Dance again. Listen, you cancel that. Anyway, I don't like this job. You don't like this job? Who likes work? Oh, no, no. Papa Luigi is sorry he could angry at you. You are the best dancer that I ever have. I'll say I am. Sure. Take all the bombs. Oh, but you too. But you must be the nice little girl. Yes. You tell her to keep her hands off or I'll... Oh, that one. she drives me crazy. Someday I... Ah, please. It is all right now. You will go dress quickly, huh? Oh, please. told me. That is, I came for my... Oh, yes. Well, don't believe everything you hear. But you said... Too bad, isn't it? But I've changed my mind. Your word isn't worth very much, is it? Now, you keep your word and do what you said. Oh, no. You're marrying millions. You ought to be able to... Millions, make... that's all you think of. I'm marrying the girl I love. Oh, yeah? I saw her. You don't pick them like you used to. We'll leave her name out of it. Oh, no, we won't. She looked at me as if I were dirt. I won't give you those letters, and you can't buy them. I'll smear your name over every front page in the city. We'll see about that. I think you made a mistake, Nigel. When a man's reputation is threatened, he becomes dangerous. Oh, 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 oh. 
probably around this evening congratulations. I wonder if you'll excuse me. I'd better go and see who's who and why. Of course, Mr. Tilton. Run along and come back when you can. Oh, well, well, Lou Barron. The old sleuth himself. Oh, pardon me. Private inquiry agent, isn't it? How are you, Tilton? Up and coming. Well, whose wife playing with whose husband? You're on the trail, aren't you? Well, even a detective takes a night off sometimes, Tilton. Uh, just enjoy the evening out. You're telling me. Warm, isn't it? Uh, shall we have another bottle? That's the way I feel. Miss Spring, 3000. Hello, Homicide Squad. Captain Flynn, please. Flynn speaking. That you, Pop? Hey, listen. Another gal seems over at Luigi's. Daddy or any? Yes. Well, I just found her dead in her dressing room. I'll be right over. Hello, Luigi. I hear you and Nadia aren't getting along together so well these days. Who says such lies? We are like two turtle doors. Now I'll tell one. I saw her slap your face and throw you out tonight. Slap your face. I find you once, I find you two times. Wait a minute, Luigi. No, not one second. You tried to kill her tonight with your stiletto. Well, my friend, she's dead now. Very dead. Well, keep quiet, you. <laughs> what is this? She's locked. Yes, we're waiting for Captain Flynn. The police? Please, jam down. Flat feet. You spaghetti's following you. Oh, hello, Pop. Getting speedy in your old age. In there. Burns, you guard the door. That's don't let anybody come in. I don't touch anything. Suicide. Think so? Clean enough, ain't it? Oh, Nadia wouldn't have gone to the trouble of wrecking the room like this and upsetting all her makeup. Besides, he's just taken the knife out of her right hand. Nadia was left-handed. The wound was made with a powerful up thrust of the knife, straight into the heart. If she were left-handed, the wound would have been made from left to right, in a downward direction. Murder, all right. And a dirty one at that. Somebody put the knife in her hand. Right, Sherlock Holmes. Right. Any fingerprints? I can't tell yet until I compare them. Let them in. Let them in. I know something. That is stiletto. She just belonged to that Valeria girl. You dirty double-crosser. You killed her. Liar. Did you not say you would make a place to hop? Hey, one at a time. What is this? She said she killed Nadia. Oh, you've been hanging around her door all evening. That is not so. She slapped his face. Uh, you keep quiet. Now listen. Beg pardon, Captain, but here's a man who thinks he knows something. Who are you? I'm the cook here, sir. About a half hour ago, I was standing out in the alley, smoking. 
Loping, huh? I fire you. Did you keep quiet? Go on. Well, a guy, all dolled up, comes running out the back way, and he's mad, I think, and he's talking to himself. What do you look like? Well, he was a man about six foot tall, dark hair, dark overcoat, and a dark hat, and I think he had on a tuxedo. Mr. Benson, I hear him having one big row with Nadia. Me too. Now we're getting somewhere. Hello, Smitty. Go back to Nadia's dressing room and get your picture. See you later. Okay, Sonny. Oh, Mr. Tilton, is it true? She's dead? Murdered? Ted went to see her. No, no, cheer up. Ted's not that kind of a chump. Now, listen, Baron, I've led a clean life. That's what you say, Tilton. Oh, pardon me, Miss Van Ostrom. I wonder if I may be of service to you. Allow me. This Benson's the man we want, all right. But I ain't satisfied. Bring them all down to headquarters. All right, come on, let's go. Come on. Let's have a look at that stuff. According to this, Luigi, you're in the clear. About the time the woman was killed, you were busy firing your ship. And then you were canceling the leader of your orchestra. It looks to me as if you were going to go out of business. Now you stay shot until this business is cleared up. And now, Miss Valerie Delroy, say what is the right name? Miss O'Brien. Well, Maggie, I'm going to let you go. Benson's the man we want, all right. And if he isn't brought in pretty quick, I know some cops that'll be pounding their feet in the sticks. I've known Ted Benson for years, and he couldn't be. Oh, sure, sure. Well, I suppose you could tell me who did it. Not exactly, but I will. Oh, yeah? How? Read my column tomorrow. Going to invite the murderer in to confess, I suppose. Yes. Yes, something like that. Say, you better lay off those detective magazines. They'll drive you back. And now, you can all go. But don't start packing any suitcases or buying any railroad tickets. I may want to see you again. Well? Ted will be arrested and charged with murder as soon as he can be picked up. Tommy, he didn't do it. Of course he didn't. But we've got to find out who did. Back me up. All right, hold it still. Thanks. Let's all go back to my place and have a drink. I'd like to. You, Smitty? Never refused one yet. Want to make it unanimous? I'm going home. Oh, we can do that any time. Oh, come along, Miss Valerie. I think it'll do you good. Well, suppose I may as well. Fine, that's settled. Let's go. But the pictures I took absolutely show it. Huh. What say to only three fingers? Oh, excuse me, but... Uh... Gentlemen over there are very nervous. I give him yours. Use that dagger in your dance, didn't you, Miss Valerie? Yes. When did you go back to Nadia's room to get it? I didn't go back. I never was back. You can't send it on me. My I didn't kill that woman. My dear girl, I don't think you killed her. But maybe you saw someone. Someone you're afraid of. Someone threatened you, told you to keep your mouth shut. I'm so sick of all of this. You can't frame me. You're going to get me right one day. When you do, give me a ring. Val, he's only trying to help us. He wants to find the guy that did do it, which clears the rest of us. Listen, you skimp. They can pin it on me. It leaves them out. That girl's fart and stiff. She knows something, all right. Got to make her talk. But how? Ted! Where have you been? I don't know. Come on, Ted. Sit down and spill it. Well, now do you refuse to give up the letters? Oh. I hadn't figured that. We had an awful row. The letters were lying on the table. I made a grab for them. And she tried to stick me with a dagger. Sweet little playmate. Quiet, Smitty. Go on, Ted. I got the dagger out of her hand. The lights went out. Something crashed. I must have hit the electric cord. Oh, Ted, how could you? Oh, I didn't kill her, Vi. 
I guess the lights going out brought me to my senses. What a story! Yes, here's one you can't reconstruct. I found the switch and put the lights on. She calmed down. She still didn't want to give up my letters, but finally did agree to sell them. I wanted to get it over with. So I went over to the day and night bank and got the money. We never saw you. I didn't go out to the cafe. I beat it out the back way. Stopped at the check room for my hat and coat. I didn't want you all to know. When I came back, coming in, I heard Tommy telling Luigi, Nadia's dead. Then, well, I guess I lost my nerve. And you've been running around the town ever since? Yes, uh... Well, well that's a good joke on Bob Flynn and his cop. I wonder what happened to the letters. Please have not say anything about them. Well, I didn't take them. Well, then who? Oh, yes. Yeah. The letter. Missing, I guess. Well, how? Say what, listen. Well, don't look at me like that. I didn't kill the girl. It's all right, Smitty. I'm a guilty party. I slipped them in your pocket in case Flynn got ambitious and started searching people. And suppose they were found on me. Well, you were on your way out, and I was going to telephone you anyhow. But yet, oh boy, we've got some tall thinking to do. What do you think Ted ought to do? Well, it's called facing the music. Such eloquence. You mean give myself up? Mr. Tilton's right, Ted. You can't run away from trouble. You're right, Tommy. I guess I'm pretty lucky having friends like you. <laughs> give these to Captain Finn. Tell him I told you his box wasn't his bite. We're very grateful, Mr. Tilton. Good night. Good night. Don't hold anything out on Flynn. Tell him the whole works. I won't. See you later, I suppose. You can count on that. Night, Tommy. Good night, old boy. So you sent the lambs to the slaughter. You sure like you, don't you, Sonny? But I didn't go so big for that hide the letters game. Now, Smitty, that's no way to talk. Maybe he's safer in jail. Hey, is he a friend of yours or not? Certainly, one of my oldest and best. Well, you've got a heck of an idea of friendship sending him to Flynn. You know, Smitty, that's no way to talk to a famous columnist. Columnist, Bob? What's a columnist? All right, Miss Bones, I'll bite. What is it? A columnist, Mr. Interlocutor, in my opinion, is a man who burns the scandal at both ends. <laughs> I'm going to use that. outside line. Make three or four nines. I won't be back till six o'clock. I'll answer it, Tato, and if it's the office, tell them I've gone out. Uh, hello, please. Uh, if it's our uh, office, he had gone out. Uh, thank you. <laughs> oh, uh, it's not the uh, office. It's our lady. Pretty mad, I think. Oh. Hello? Hello, Tilton speaking. Listen, Mr. Tilton, I told you I had nothing to do with Nadia's murder. Oh, yes, you do. You're still trying to pin it on me. Everybody knows we had a row, and they'll be saying I did it. I read what you said about jealousy. It isn't so. Yes, that's what you say, young lady, but supposing you loosen up. Hello? Hello? Wait a minute. All right, mister, I'll loosen up and I'll tell you plenty. No, not over the phone. I want to see you. Fine. Well, now, let's see. I think I'm going to be pretty busy all day. How about a nice little dinner somewhere tonight? Yeah, all right. 38th Street. Right you are. I'll be seeing you. Fly them with food and drink and they talk every time. Fly them with food and drink. They talk all the time. Pretty foolish.
Violet, I, I absolutely forbid it. Now, Father, there's no use going on. I am going to see Ted. Ridiculous. Think of the scandal. Beg pardon, sir. A Mr. Thomas Tilden. I told you, Holmes, that I wasn't at home. Tell them that I can't see them. I know, sir, but they insisted. Hi there, Brian. Good morning, pretty. We have no statement to make, sir. Mr. Benson's predicament is of no interest to the Van Ostrom family. That's not true, Father. Mr. Tilton, I'm going to see Ted now. Atta girl. Come on, give me a picture. Sure. It seems to me, sir, that Ted's paying rather a high price for mere youthful indiscretion. Don't I remember that you were sometimes a little reckless in your younger days? Well, uh, uh, well, I, uh, I don't remember. That is, <laughs> Just I... so, just so. It's quite all right. Uh, look here, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh... Tilton. Oh, yes, yes. I have something here that might interest you. I found it among some documents in Nadia's room the night she was murdered. Can't think how it got there. What are you going to do with this, Mr. Tilton? I really don't know. What do you suggest? Well, uh, if that bill were out of the way, I believe I would try and help your friend Benson. Bye, dear. You had better be going. And you may say, sir, that the Van Ostrom family is standing squarely behind Ted Benson. Now, if you'll excuse me, I... Uh... What on earth have you done to Father? He was raging like a lion before you came in. I don't know. It must just be my winning personality. Ha! Oh, there now, honey. Be a good sport. Everything's going to be hunky-dory. Smitty gets brownie. I've retained Mr. Barron to look after Ted's interests. Lou Barron? Why, oh, Tommy, I thought you knew him. Oh, yes, yes, sure I know him. Oh, but then I know a lot of uh, funny people. Still, he may turn up something. Goodbye. We'll be up sometime. Goodbye. Bye-bye. I like that girl. Celebrate. Let's go call on Lou Barron. Okay. Hello, Angel Tate. Yes, yes, I'm in close touch with the department. Just a minute, Tiffany. I think I can promise you an arrest within a very short time. You know, Lou, you ought to tie up your loose ends. Tuck them in the drawers. Part of the game, Tilton. Something to impress suckers. I suppose you've heard that I've been retained by Miss Van Ostrom to solve the murder at Luigi's. Now I call that a real stroke of genius. How'd you figure it? Listen, Tilton. Look here, Baron. You don't have to put on an act for me. You know that I know this is the first decent case you've ever had. Is that all you've got to say? No. I want to make a deal with you. First, I'll give you a good plug in the column. What's the catch? We swap news. Add it together and you may find yourself famous. Well? I'll play. I thought you would. You know the Delroy girl knows more than she'll admit. That's what I thought. I'm taking her to dinner tonight, and I might manage to get the lowdown. It'll be low down, all right. You'll have to stoop for that keyhole. Now come along, Smitty. Take a nice picture of Mr. Baron for the feast tomorrow. <sighs> Give me that row of ivory. Hold it still. Thanks. You know, retainer is ER, not OR. I don't like your boyfriend. Well, I'm not so hot for him myself, but he might turn up something. Well, don't forget our date at five to interview Haig and Haig. No. Right now, I've got to go see our friend Flynn. Miss Van Austin called. Any news for her? Tell her I'm expecting some important developments. I just knew you'd find something, Mr. Brown. This guy, Benson, is a guy, all right. They've got a cinch case against him. So, it's you, eh? Yep. 
Say, what is all this guff you've been writing about me saying the case looks easy? Well, isn't it? Did you know about that Osterman retained Lou Babin? That guy? Yeah. Why, he couldn't track an elephant across a wet tennis court. <laughs> You're not kidding me, Tommy. Come to the point. Benson's a pal of yours. Have his mouthpiece plead guilty to a charge of manslaughter, and I'll see what I can do. Flynn, you're always about this case. Do you know any more jokes? Yes. Read my column in the morning. That will be a joke. I'm calling from Miss Valerie Delroy. Not in. I said I have an appointment with Miss Valerie Delroy. Would you please ring her room? She's not in. She went out about three hours ago. Fifty. Say, gorgeous. Ain't you never had a date run out on you before? All right, cut the comedy. Look here. Telephone me as soon as she comes in, will you? Mm, sure, mister. Say, are you kidding me? Now what? You're the guy that phoned her. I phoned Miss Delroy? Come on, sister. Let's have the works. Well, the guy that phoned said, this is Tilton. I gotta change our appointment. Make it a half hour later. I'll meet you in my car outside your hotel. And she went? Sure, I seen her go. See, are you really Tommy Tilton? Yes. Look here, keep this under your hat and I won't say anything about you listening in. That man's voice sound anything like mine? Well, no, no, it didn't, Mr. Tilton. Sort of horse-like. I thought the guy had a cold. Hmm. Okay, Tilton. Lou Barron, the well-known investigator. Sounds good, doesn't it? That part's all right, but... Oh, I know the rest of it's a lot of tripe. Tilton's just bluffing. He doesn't know a thing. Greetings, sweet and beautiful. How's your spending today? Well, did I put you in the column or did I? Nice notice, Tommy. Did you see a picture in the paper? Pretty swell, I call it. <laughs> Not bad. Bring me uh, number seven's report, Miss Martle. I've had this operative tail Luigi. Now, he reports Luigi acting very suspicious on the verge of bankruptcy. I'm telling them all, Tilton. Ah, uh, that's what I call fellow work. What did you find out in the Delroy woman? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> then it shows your hunch wasn't very good, wasn't ah, it? Ah, that's where you're wrong, Barrett. I'm more than ever convinced I'm right. You see, somebody doesn't want me to talk to Delroy. That proves Delroy knows something. Simple, isn't it? You mean uh, she's disappeared? Oh, you guessed well, but I didn't say she disappeared. Didn't you say that someone didn't want you to talk to Valerie? Right to our Baron. Well, I won't let any grass grow under my feet. Your devoted servant, Myrtle, darling. Silly idiot. Disgusting. Next time I shall certainly throw something at him. <laughs> You'd throw yourself at him if he gave you any encouragement. You're going to be very polite. That fellow is going to be useful to me. Isn't it good to be alive and free? Free? Yes. I thought I'd go crazy in that cell. There are only 12 hours. It seemed like a lifetime. You've got to get hold of yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know there was anyone here. We came home an hour ago. Mr. Barron to see you, Miss Van Ostrom. Have him come in. Yes, miss. Maybe he has some news. I wonder if he's located Valerie. I've got some great news for you. 
The Delroy girl is dead. Dead? Dead? You... you call that great news? They dragged her out of the lake less than an hour ago. The poor girl. Yeah, I figured it all out myself. Plain case of suicide. She couldn't stand the gap. Oh, they practically had it on her. Oh, she was guilty, all right. Oh, Mr. Tilton, to see you, Miss... Well, Madam, you are fat. I didn't expect to find you here. Mr. Tilton, something terrible has happened. Yes, Valerie Delroy just committed suicide. I'm not so sure of that. Hmm. Ted, I'm taking you down to Flynn. You're going to give yourself up. What? Say, if you think I had anything no, to no, do... No, 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 there's no time to argue. I simply want to put you somewhere where you'll be safe from being found in the bottom of a lake or in a car full of monoxide gas. You think Ted's in danger? I know it. Come on. Oh, good afternoon. Hello, Thomas, my boy. What can I do for you? Mr. Benson wants to give himself up. And what charge will I place again? No charge. Material witness in the murder of Nadia Renee. Mm. Here, read this. That was found in Valerie Dalloy's purse. Uh, Valerie confessed, did she? Confess? Oh, Ted, I'm so glad for you. Then, uh, then I'm cleared? Sure. Poor little Valerie. What's the matter with you, Tommy? You're losing your grip? You sure had that girl plenty scared. And you gave her all day to think about it. Then she gets cold feet. And we fish her out of the water with a confession. Listen, Flynn. I admit that girl was scared. Scared almost to hysteria. So what does she do? I'll buy it. She sits herself down at the typewriter and cold-bloodedly types herself out a business-like confession. Then to make sure we'll believe it's genuine, she signs it with pen and ink. Then what does she do? Does she turn on the gas or take poison? No. She goes and finds herself a nice cold lake. It doesn't make sense. Ah, some more of your psychology stuff. Sure, that's what tells me that girl was murdered. Murdered? murdered? Oh, don't mind him. What about that? Forgery. Baloney. It's suicide, and it'll go on the books as suicide. And now, Miss Van Ostrom, you can take Mr. Benson home and take that nut with you. Coroner's final report on the Delroy case, sir. Mm, lungs found to contain no water. I was right. Dead before she was put in the water. Cause of death, small wound at base of skull, hidden by hair. Weapon, a thin pointed instrument, probably a stiletto. Interval between death and discovery of body, approximately... Eighteen hours. Hmm. Same method. Same person killed both girls. You still want me to detain Benson? Yes, I still want you to detain Mr. Benson. Benson. Hmm. Benson. Eighteen hours. Let me see. That would make you... Benson, where were you yesterday between the hours of two and four? Why, I... I was in my apartment, I guess. Y yes. Yes, I'm, I'm sure I was. Anyone with you? Anyone see you there? Anyone know you were there? No. I don't think so. Uh, you see, I was, I was worried. I wanted to be alone. Ted Benson, I arrest you for the murders of Nadia Rene and Valerie Delroy. Steady on them. Captain Flynn? Miss Van Ostrom, I'm a police officer. I'm doing my duty. Hey, fella. Dave's not out of the whistle blows. Okay, Tommy. It was pretty tough. You can take him, Miss Van Ostrom. Ted's where we want him, and that murder charge will never stick. No. No. Pop, you're making one swell mistake. The best you ever made, and that's saying something. We'll let the jury decide that. I'm not worrying, boy. In again, out again, Finnegan. I'm getting used to this place. Not a boy. Now, look here. You go right down to Ted's lawyer. Tell him everything that's happened, and tell him on no account to try and get bail for Ted. I don't think he could anyway. Come in. Why, Bill, hello. I'm glad to see you. Glad to see you too, Tommy. Well, what brings you to our fair city? Been trying to land a job on your sheet. It's as good as done. I'll fix you up. Fine. You've been having some excitement in this town, haven't you? Such as? Well, these killings. First the Renee woman and then Delroy. Oh, and by the way, I knew Nadia Renee when she was singing at Rossi's dump in Chicago. You did? Yes. But that wasn't her name then. No? What was it? Marina Farina. Marina Farina? Sounds like a breakfast food. Thanks for the tip, Bill. I can use it. Hmm. 
Marina Farina. Well, it's all over but the shouting. Well, Mr. Byrne, whatever do you mean? Look, Tilton can't see what's under his nose. Now, Luigi's broke. Renee or Farina it was a blackmailer, see? Well, I... She was taking Luigi to the cleaners, so he bumped her off. I knew Tilton would be useful to me. Ah, uh, that Tilton. He's one devil. You know too much. If we find out. Bring me the records of the Rene Delroy cases. Yes, sir. Just the man I wanted to see. Maybe you can tell me. Uh... Oh, going away? No, Mr. Tilton, no. I stay here all the time. Ah, I see. <laughs> it is the grip what makes you think so, eh? Hmm. No. In here I have my books, my accounts. I try for to borrow some money. I take the books to see what good business my cafe do. Oh, very interesting. Oh, I know what about I wanted to ask you. Was uh, Marina Farina, uh, Nadia to you, married? How should I know? Why you ask me all these questions? Oh, just curiosity. Mr. Tilton, why you write in the papers all those funny things about me? Someday, you're going to be sorry. Think so, Luigi? See, someday you will be sorry. A well-known investigator. Say, I've half a mind to it. I know you've only half a mind. What's on it? Say, Captain. I've uncovered some very important evidence which clearly points to Luigi Cortellum. Yes, you have not. You've been reading Tilton's ravings the same as I have. But, Captain... But, my eye, you know what an alibi is? Why, of course I do. All right, take a look at that. And if you can break that Italians, I'll give you my job. Well, of course I... Baron, you're in over your head. Hiring correspondents for fake divorce cases is your limit. Now, scram. Well, I didn't know you and Baron were pals. Pals? I just ran into Luigi carrying a suitcase. Well, there's no law against that. He was mighty scared when he saw me. You're barking up the wrong tree, Tommy. I've got the right guy, all right, and he's going to the hot seat. Oh, I know. You've got a lot of circumstantial evidence, plus motive. Oh, come on, come on. Benson had plenty of motive, all right. Yeah, plus definite antisocial characteristics. Oh, word, word. Even so, Pop, you're wrong. I know you're wrong. You're not paying my salary, son. Besides, Luigi has an unbreakable alibi. Oh, who ever heard of an unbreakable alibi? Come on in. The door's open. Why, Mickey, what is this, a masquerade or something? Or something. Just relaxing. Just getting back to myself. Goodness me, and to think that I knew her when. My, my, look at the glad rags, will you? And those hair. I'd look fine, though, covering the fire with you gorillas like this. Oh, it looks all right to me. Sure, to you, I'm just one of the boys. Well, aren't you? No, I'm not. Well, don't get sore. Oh, forget it. I'm a little frazzled tonight. <laughs> What's the joke? You'll never know. You know, someone said that the tragedy of today is that we laugh at our own tragedies. Well, it keeps us out of the booby hat. Okay. You win, Sonny. Now, if I were Philo Vance or Sherlock Holmes... All right, I... Tommy. Let's talk it over. Right you are. Well, Ted Benson's not guilty. We agree on that. Certainly. 
And I can't see that fellow Walton in it. Well, that leaves Luigi. Yes, with his confounded, unbreakable alibi. Who else? I don't know, except Thomas Tilton. Maybe I did it myself in a fit of absent-minded virtue. <laughs> I wish that girl had stayed at Ross's. Ross's? See, tell me, one time when I was on the Chicago... Oh, I my knew... dear, don't tell me all that again, Now, don't please. suppress me, Tommy. Come here. Oh, the album. I got that just three minutes after a big shot was plugged in Rossi's joint. The cops tried to pin it on Rossi, but Farina alibied for him. I knew there was something about Luigi. That's the same girl, all right. Look here, this wedding ring I found in Nadia's dressing room. A-R to M-F. Alfredo Rossi to Marina Farina. Why, it's plain as the nose on your face. Rossi, that's Luigi, killed a man in Chicago. Nadia, who was then Farina, forced him to marry her and blackmailed him, and then he was sick of it and he killed her. Now you're getting places. Valerie saw Luigi coming out of Nadia's room. He figured she knew too much, so he killed her too. Unbreakable alibi, I'll bust it higher than a kite. So Baron was right. Oh, there must be something wrong. That windbag was never right. There's always got to be a first time. Say, her jewelry. She never did get it back, did she? Wait a minute, Smithy. I've got it. I've got it. That <laughs> must be it. Is this a brainstorm? Oh, darling, if it isn't, it's high time I had one. That's opening your safe the hard way, isn't it? Lose anything? Uh, yes, uh, no. Uh, I don't know. I uh, had some uh, very important papers on the Rene uh, murder. Uh, they're lost. I, uh, well, that's bad, Baron. Better look out for yourself. Looks as though you were getting hot. Oh, I'll take care of myself. I hope so. By the way, I hear that you and Flynn had a disagreement about Luigi. Unpleasant person, Flynn. Luigi's out. That was a rotten tip you gave me. Why, I thought you were investigating. Oh, cut out the funny stuff, Tilton. If the evidence is in that safe, I'm a cinch. Won't need you. I'll do better alone. Well, well, well. So you're going to hog all the glory. And the cash. I hear this San Ostrom has up the reward to 20000 So what? So it may be hard to stop squealers. I'll teach that young four flusher a lesson. Give me burn. You see, run the police department, eh? Find Tilton and tell him I want to see him. No, have him brought in. I'll show him. Well, that's your worry. Get him. It is you? See, si. you still wish to buy the cafe? Sure. You will keep the name Luigi? Sure. How much? Ah, uh, tobacco. That is little morning. All right. You pay today? Good. It is so. See you soon. Hello, Luigi. Closing a deal? So you listen. You hear? Yes, I listen. I hear. Shouldn't leave the doors open, Luigi. Very bad habit. I wouldn't be in too much of a hurry if I were you. Read my column today? I have not. I no longer read trash. Oh. Fine talk. 
Well, I'll be seeing you. Now, oh, it's you, Tilton. <laughs> I thought it was... Who? A cop. Every time I make a move, some dumb flatfoot starts pounding the pavement after me. I'm getting good and tired of it. Seen the graphic today? You mean that column of yours? No, I never read it. Better start now. Buy one today. Why make a sensation? They've got Benson. Ah, oh, that's a stall. It is? Sure. The cops are following me. They must figure I know something about the murders. Do you? I don't know any more about them than you do. Red Tilton's column today? Yes, Mr. Barron, I have. You know something or he's bluffing. You can hear, can't you? Say something. Couldn't you make friends with Mr. Tilton again? Couldn't I make friends with Mr. Tilton again? What for? Well, then you could find out if he was bluffing or not. Flynn? Baron. Say, about the uh, Red A things that you recovered. Now, I've got a pretty hot tip. We ain't got them. Furthermore, we never had them. Chew on that. Oh, you can't fool me, Baron. I know your game. I've a good mind to pull you in. Locate Tilton. That's what I thought. Never mind what you thought. Do as I tell you. Locate Tilton. Tell him I want to apologize. It works. But this is my lunch hour now. I have a date. You have a date. Don't make me laugh. Get busy on that phone. Yeah, pull that interview with the mayor off the front page. Please. I got an exclusive on the war situation coming in. Well, where have you been all day? Half the city's looking for you. Flynn sores are boiled out. Yeah, I thought he would be. Listen, Phil. If you don't deliver tomorrow, this paper's going to be the biggest laughing stock in town. Your syndicate will put thumbs down on you and you'll be through. That's my way. Hello? Oh. Yes, yeah, for you. Tilton speaking. Oh, hello, Myrtle, sweetheart. Ever green and ever faithful. Oh, Mr. Tilton, I'm so glad I found you. Mr. Barron feels badly about this morning, and he wants badly to apologize. He said I had a very important matter to discuss. Can't you come up? Well, I guess that can be arranged. Ed, if anything breaks, I'll be up at Barron's for half an hour. Tell your boss I'll be right up. In about ten minutes? I'll tell him. What are you playing around with that shyster of Barron for? He's been bleeding the Van Ostrom's for expense money. Oh. Oh, I'm with you there, but don't forget now. Tomorrow, I'll name the murderer. Well, I'll send a messenger up for your coffee tonight. You better make it first thing in the morning. Be seeing you, I hope. Uh. Yes, Tilton? Yes, Mr. Barron. He'll be here shortly. I heard him tell someone to call him here if there was something broken. Something broken? Where was he? The newspaper office. Something broken. If something breaks, I'll bet that's what he meant. Yes, that was it. Tilton, I guess I owe you an apology. Sit down. Oh, I think nothing on it. That darn safe had my book pretty bad. Have a cigar? No, then. Got any news? Have I? Say, I've got the hottest lead yet. Tilton? You know, I think you and I are after the same man. Who do you suspect? Oh, don't be so obvious. Maybe Tommy Tilton knows something. That's it, isn't it? Well, do you? Do I? What do you know? Ah, that'd be telling. And I'm not telling yet. Why not? Just a surprise. Don't you like surprises? Bluffing. I'll bet you haven't got a thing. Oh, you want to bet, do you? I'll bet my role against yours that I'll name the murderer. Tilton, who did kill those two girls? Send the nickel tomorrow, Typewad, and find out.
Answer the door, Tato. I've had my whole force out looking for you with orders to bring you in. You're under arrest. Well, what's the charge? Making false statements. Obstructing the police in the performance of their duty. Accessory after the fact that anything I can hang on you. Oh, sit down, Pop. Let's talk this over. I won't sit down, and I'm not talking. I ain't saying a word. But you're going to do a lot of talking. I get you down to headquarters. I'm not bluffing this time. I got the goods. You mean every word I said in my column this morning. Well, then why haven't you? Because I haven't proof. Absolute proof. Oh, one of these later things you're going to tell me later. Bah. No, Sarpus. I'm going to tell you right now. All right, shoot. I'm all ears. Pin them back and listen. Give me my regards. Going somewhere, buddy? I'm off offer. Opening up a new act in Trenton tonight. Trenton? Hmm. Over the state line. So you go on back to your room. Don't get tough. Get going. So you see, it couldn't have been anyone else. What are you going to do now? I'm going to call out every man I've got and have that skunk dragged in. And be laughed out of court by some smart mouthpiece. You who were talking about unbreakable alibis. Proof, Captain. Proof. I'll sweat it out of him. Oh, yes, you will. That baby? Oh, no. Well, what's your idea? He's got to confess voluntarily. For the love of Lulu, top sense, son. Listen, Tim, I beat you the hook, and tonight I'm going to bring in a murderer. Oh. Oh, where are you? Bring me my hat and coat. Yes, sir. Why, Father, you're not going out at this time of night. Yes, I, I'm not sleepy. I think I'll run over to the club for a little bridge. Always find someone there. Good night, darling. Good night, Father. See. Stay put. There's a gun on you. Come for us. You. You took him. Well, you thought from your safe. With the help of one of my less reputable friends. You thought your mob had double-crossed you, didn't you? Very stupid of you, Baron, to keep the stuff there. And the fair Nadia wouldn't come through with the dough, eh? So you had a struggle, and then you finished her. How'd you find out? Who squealed? You did. Remember the confession you forged for the Valerie kid? A bit of unconscious reconstruction. It was an accident. I didn't mean It to... wasn't any accident when you killed that poor little... Oh, well, I might as well pull up the baubles. Back up a little, Baron. Right, boy. 
wise guy. If it's going to make you feel any better, I bumped off the two girls. And now it's your turn. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, the gun isn't loaded. So you killed the girls. That's all we wanted to know. Thanks, folks. Take him down and book him. Come on, let's go. Well, I got him. I've had my eye on that bird for a long time. Fine work, Captain. Fine work. Oh, you helped quite a bit. Say, here's a good one. We picked up Luigi tonight. The Baron sent him out to the zoo and told him if he'd go out there, he'd learn who killed the girl. Hey, he wanted to be sure he wouldn't have an alibi. Well, I guess I'll be getting some shut-eye. So long, folks. So long, Captain. Oh, aren't you going to take your friend? <laughs> Good old Papa Flynn. You know, that might have been me. Well, I'm glad it's all over. Smitty, what do you say we celebrate? Celebrate? What do we celebrate? Oh, you mean Ted. Sure. Tomorrow night, eh? Buy us too. Yes, right. yes. No, no, just us. And, Smitty, do you think you could wear some of those glad rags? Oh, so you did notice that. Hold it. Go. Smith it. <laughs>